We're coming to you live from 815. Another day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Another Resurrection Sunday. Good morning to all our conference call listeners, our faithful listeners. God bless you on today. Amen. Fifth Sunday, fifth Sunday of November, 22nd of November. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that only the Lord could make. I will rejoice. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen and amen. I know Jesus, he affects it for you. He knows just what to do. Whenever, whenever. You pray, let him have your way. Jesus, here, good morning, Sister Gary, for you. Jesus, we'll fix it for you. Did you hear the family? Good morning, good morning. He knows just what to do. Good morning, Sister Walker, God bless you. Oh, whenever you pray, let him have his way. Jesus will fix it for you. Jesus will fix it for you. Oh, you know that's what to do. Whenever you pray, let him have way. you pray, let him have way. Whenever Jesus will fix it for you. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Tucker. God bless you. God bless you again. Another fifth Sunday, another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This Thanksgiving week, we pray that we're all are still thankful. Amen. 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 This is fourth Sunday. Amen. Next Sunday's fifth Sunday. Okay. The, amen. This year is going by fast enough. It doesn't need my help. Uh, but this is fourth Sunday. Amen. Well, we just thank God. Again, for another Resurrection Sunday, we thankful that uh, thus far the Lord has been good. Amen. Amen. He's kept us, and we thank God that things are as well as they are on this 22nd day of November. Amen. Our Thanksgiving week. Amen. I pray that we're all still thankful. Uh, we're thankful for what God has done and what he's doing. And again, that God will just continue to uh, keep his loving arms of protection all around us. Amen. We want to... Again, emphasize our, our prayer, amen, our prayer 
blessed this morning. And we thank God for our prayer ministry and keeping us abreast as to all of those who are still requesting prayer. Again, uh, we want to lift up our own brother Nichols and the Nichols family. Amen. amen. Sister Nichols, amen. amen. And the loss of his wife uh, will be eulogizing her this afternoon at three o'clock in Serenity. Uh, amen. And we just want to pray for their family and their bereavement. Uh, we want to pray uh, for James Wilson, who also uh, is recovering from COVID-19. It's the McFadden son. We want to keep him lifted up. Brother Isidore Moon, Charlene Brim, Joyce Garrett, Sister Osborne, and the loss of her son in Oklahoma. We want to lift her, lift that family up. Amen. Again, uh, Sister Chief Reverend Morris Letcher, a uh, fellow co-worker of mine, uh, we want to keep him lifted up. Uh, again, we remember Sister Carmen May and her bereavement and the loss of Sister Goals and her mother. Clyde Fisher III, J. Clyde Fisher III, we lifted him up. Sister Florence Pruitt, Arnetti Jones, uh, my brother Bruce Randolph, the loss of our niece, his daughter, his only daughter. Uh, we still remember them in prayer. Uh, Reverend Hargrove's brother, Curtis Hargrove, we still lifting up. Sister McFadden herself, amen, and requesting prayer. Sister Alma Raleigh, we're lifting her up. Uh, Sister Pauline Stone, Maxine Pierre, uh, Marsha Otterley, Marie Garrett, uh, and, and uh, Sister May Jenkins. Amen. We're lifting them up on today. We also got word this morning that Reverend Daniel Childs is in the hospital uh, again uh, with COVID-19. And Again, let's keep him lifted in prayer. Amen. Keep him lifted in prayer. Also, uh -huh. we found out that Pastor uh, Scott, amen, Pastor uh, Charles and Sister Zula, First Lady Zula Scott, are both... Uh, have contracted COVID-19 along with a daughter and a granddaughter. So we realize that the COVID-19 is still real. We realize uh, it, it's, it's not around the corner yet. Uh, we still need to seek God's face and ask God for his healing hand to prevail uh, during these times. So we, we lift up our community as a whole, our world, our country, amen. All that's going on around us, we still need the Lord. Amen. But I'm glad that the Lord is on my side. Amen. I'm glad he's on my side. But we want to continue uh, to pray because we know that prayer changes things. Amen. That prayer changes things. Amen. So again, you have time to call a neighbor, call a friend. Let them know that we're on Facebook Live. You can feel free to share our, amen, our, our free conference call number with them. Amen. So they can share with us. Amen. Through our worshipful moments. Amen. Again, we just thank God for this opportunity and this format. So we ask that you would just continue to lift us up in prayer. Again, you can find us on the website at gntbckc.org. Again, gntbckc.org. Amen. We ask you to look at our website. Amen. And just uh, uh, get familiar with it. You can Amen. Find uh, daily devotionals. Amen. You just can find uh, where you can uh, barter and trade, if you will, for our membership. Uh, also, we have, if you'd like to give a gift to our ministry, if you have secured giving through Cash App and our Push Pay. Uh, thankful again for those that are supporting the ministry. Again, our, our, the doors are closed, but our, our ministry still continues. Amen. We're thankful to those who are helping out with our pantry from week to week and helping us to do the part that we do. Everybody's in, a lot of people are in need. We must continue to remember that our times are pretty rough and we just want to make sure that we look out for each other and for our community, amen, and doing our part to help during this time of COVID, amen, amen. We're thankful to, uh, again, our, our Benevolence Committee and the work that they're doing, amen, in uh, regards to our Benevolence deeds this past week, this weekend. Uh, we just lift you up and just thank you for it. And we thank you for the giving again, once again, of the church members and our friends, which help us to do uh, the acts of kindness that we do under our bereavement ministry. We just thank our Benevolence Committee. We just thank you, thank you, thank you for the time and effort that goes in to help others. Amen. As we prepare our hearts, we again ask that you will be faithful. Again, your time, talents, and treasure. Amen. Just because we're not in person. We still can give to God our time, our talents, and our treasure. Amen. We still can do that by 
uh, not to have time to be with the Lord, to spend with the Lord, and to share with others, especially during this time. That's what our Sunday school lesson was about this morning. A responsive love. We should respond as Christians and show our love. That's what the Bible said, that they, they'll know that we are his disciples by our love. So let's just continue to love one another mm -hmm. and to love those who despitefully use us. Uh, continue to pray for our White House. We know what the situation is like in our White House. Amen. Let's pray for our president. Amen. Uh, and that uh, we just need to lift him up. Amen. Praying for our president-elect and vice president-elect. Amen. Amen. We just realized that the enemy is so busy. The devil is truly busy uh, but we know that god is still sovereign god still sits on the throne he still sits high and he looks low mm -hmm. amen so he's still god and i'm glad that god is a good god mm -hmm. yes he is he's a good god amen yes, and for our response of reading once again psalm 119 105 thy word, word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path our vision model pouring oil for the lamps of men to light the world. Again, we cannot get tired and grow weary of letting people know that we believe that the, 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 the oil that goes in man's lamp for them to see the way is the word of God. Amen. The word of God, sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen. We need to continue to pour as every chance we get. He said we got to uh, redeem the time, make every opportunity to tell a dying world about the living Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, so men may see their way because there's so many uh, that are still lost, who need to find their way. Uh -huh. Amen. I heard somebody say the other day, people don't need a church home. People need the Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, uh, yes. People need the Lord in their lives. Amen. It's easy to put your name on a roll in some church somewhere. Amen. Well, well. But that's not what's going to get you to heaven. Amen. You need the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. He needs to be Lord and Master, as we shared with you last week. If he's Lord, and one day every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that that's the name of Jesus. That's how they're going to do it. That he is Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Every language, every tongue. So nobody uh, is, is a, exempt from declaring that he is Lord. Amen. I don't care what language you speak. You cannot say, I know no English. So I can't say that. Mm -hmm. No, no. Say it in your language mm -hmm. that Jesus is Lord. That's what the Bible has declared. That that's where we're headed to, that everybody will confess. We will concede, if you will, yeah. to say and admit that Jesus is almighty. He's powerful. And even if you, they never get a chance to accept him as their Lord and Savior, they will have to admit, concede that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. And that refresher from last week, if you will, and dropping it in our spirit to just share with everyone this morning that we need to still tell a dying world about the living Christ. Amen. Amen. Again, we are so thankful for, uh, I, I keep saying it because I want somebody might have missed it last time in regards to our brethren who helped with our parking lot services. We're still thankful to uh, Sister Randolph and Daddy White for how they're blessing us with music. It, it helps me a lot. Amen. Many pastors are, are are struggling with it. Just, amen, looking into a mic and looking into a camera uh, to deliver the word. Amen. It, it's good to, to get some amens every now and then. It's good to get some encouragement every now and then. So all who are listening, give your pastors uh, some, some, uh, amen, some encouragement during these times because it's still hard to see members who are getting sick and members who are passing away. Amen. Life is still going on on top of, amen, what COVID is already on top of, what life was already dishing out. So let's continue to keep one another in prayer. Amen. 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 God bless you and God keep you. It's my prayer. Pray for me. Pray for Sister Randolph. Amen. Again, that all, uh, you know, thus far, amen, uh, we're thanking God for that things are as well as they are. Again, tomorrow may change, but today we pray, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. We know the Bible lets us know that tomorrow will take care of itself. He says, sufficient for the day thereof is the evil that is within. So we have an opportunity to give God praise today. Uh, you know, one more time one more time he's allowed us to be together one more time there's some folk that if they can speak from the grave they would like to turn on the radio and hear the gospel they would like to turn on the tv and see the gospel they would like to tune in 
on Facebook Live or some format, live stream to hear the word of God one more time. Amen. So while we are here, while we're together, let's continue to give God the praise, give him the glory, give him the honor, for he is worthy of all our praise. Amen. Amen. God is worthy. Somebody saying amen out there. Amen. amen. I, I hope somebody's saying amen. Amen. Just because you're in your home and your house shoes, don't forget to say amen. Don't forget to clap your hands. Don't forget to lift holy hands. Amen. Just because you're in your home. Because that we're two or three together together. In my name, yeah. touching and agreeing, he said, I will be in the midst. In the midst. Amen. Yeah. That being be in the middle. The Lord wants to be up in the middle of all that we do. But guess what? We have to invite him in. We have to invite him in. Amen. When praises go up, we say, blessings come down. Amen. So we invoke the Lord's presence during this hour. Amen. That the Lord will be with us and to just anoint our praise, our prayers, our preaching, our teaching, our sharing. We just want the Lord to be all up in it. Amen. For he's worthy to be praised. And not only that, we want the Lord to bless us as his vessels. Amen. We're co labors together with God. We're not here for no shape, form, or fashion. We just pray that the Lord would use us as his vessels, that we may touch others that might be listening, that might be watching us right now. Again, we just thank God for all that he's done. So, and things he's yet to do concerning our lives. And with that, let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, once again, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for last night's rest, Father God. Thank you, Father God, how you kept us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father God, as the storm clouds passed over, Lord, you just kept us safe, and we thank you. And we thank you, Father God, and realize, Lord, it wasn't the alarm clock that woke us up this morning. It wasn't the birds singing outside our windows. It wasn't a knock on the door, the telephone ringing. But, Father, it was your grace and mercy. You touched us this morning with your finger of love, allowed us to see yet another day. So, Lord, we thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. And, Father God, we just thank you for all that you've done and things you're doing concerning our lives. And, Master, we lift up now again the names that have been caught out on the sick room. Master, there's so many more that are standing in the need of prayer. Oh, Father God, we lift them up to you right now. Names we may not have called, but, Father God, you know all. You see all. You hear all. And Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that while on others thou art calling, do not pass us by. Lord, somebody needs you, Lord. Stop by here. Somebody's praying and fasting, Lord. Again, stop by here, Lord, on today. But surely we need you. Again, we lift up our frontline workers once again, the nurses that are becoming so frustrated. Oh, Father God, for not having the right, uh, enough equipment, enough space, enough room, uh, Father God, to treat people, Lord, that they have, again, are faced with the decision who's going to live and who's going to die based on the resources that they have. Lord, we lift them up. We know that burden is heavy on them right now. Oh, Father, our first responders and firemen and policemen and the ambulance workers, Father God, we just lift them all up to you right now. And, Father God, we know uh, we, we lifted up a few other firefighters, Lord, within our city here, Lord, that have contracted COVID because they're out trying to help other people. And, Lord, just help us, Lord, to uh, quit being so stubborn, Master, that people will put on their masks, Father God, and Lord, people will practice social distancing, Father God. Lord, we, we saw the crowded airports. People are still going about, again, as in the day of Noah, you know, eating and drinking and being merry, Father God, as if nothing is going on, which is being super spreading events. And Father God, I realize we want to see our families. But Father God, we know that scientists have asked us to do certain things. And Father God, help us to not be so selfish, Lord, and heed to what has been said and for, for, what, us, for what we need to do to help mitigate, Father God, uh, this plague that's in our land today. Oh, Father God, we know you're able. We know you can and we know you will fight our battles if we just keep still. Oh, Father God, again, strengthen us when we're weak and build us up when we're torn down. And Master, we'll be ever careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor and said in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Christ we do pray, that all God's children said, amen. amen, and amen, amen, amen. So be it, Lord. Yes. Amen. God bless you, and God keep you again as our prayer. Amen. We're going to have a, another selection uh, from uh, Sister Randolph, amen, and Daddy White. Amen. We're just so grateful uh, once again for uh, their being here with us today. To help us out and continue to lift us up in prayer. Amen. 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 Take me back, dear Lord, where I 
going to the edge of a family God bless you God bless you Family, early in Hill family. But God bless still you. Good I morning, hear you calling me. Those simple things that I once knew. Just the roads, God bless you. Their see memories you. Keep God bless you. Going. God bless you, so friend. God bless you. Pray. Oh, You're feeling better. I must confess. Today. Lord, I've been blessed. Back here. God bless you. Amen. And yet my soul Chamber family, God bless you. Good morning. first received you amen where i first believed yes. amen where we had all that zeal and had all that energy amen right. was waiting for them to unlock the door so you could get in the church amen was yeah. there every time the door well, opened yeah. up amen because our zeal was so heightened amen with the excitement of getting to know the lord amen we need to return back to those days amen, amen. To, to, again forget not the benefits and what all god has done mm -hmm. he brought it from a mighty long way and still be excited about jesus amen you still be need to be excited about jesus and being with his people amen again we thank you for that selection again i was want to share that again uh, i'm thinking today was fifth sunday but fifth sunday is is next sunday uh -huh. amen this has been a long month but we realized again as we were uh, thinking back on what would we be doing in person amen this was would have been our women's day celebration coming up this weekend amen so we, we still want to honor and celebrate our, our women amen in our churches across the land women who are still faithful amen in helping ministry to continue and get simply we thank you for every woman of our church that's staying faithful to the cause amen we thank god for you amen and, and we just ask that we we continue to stay connected. Amen. Amen. If you love, I pray that we're still uh, are doing our stewardship a rally, if you will, that you can give electronically uh, on our stewardship plan that uh, to help continue to support our, our many of uh, the days that we're having. Again, we're not in person, uh, but we still have special needs. Amen. We still have needs. Amen. We, we're trying to hold on with our pantry and do what we can with our volunteers. Amen. We had a freezer go out on us, amen, last week, amen. 
amen, and again, need that special help to help us, amen, to try to just restore, because all those things have an impact. The volunteers, if they go down and have an impact on our giving, uh, our baskets, if, if our food resources go down, amen, and the transportation to be able to pick up the, the food items and bring them to our church, all those things have to work together. Amen, amen. Amen, for us to be successful in our food pantry. Uh, without a freezer, we can't hold as much food. So we're praying that uh, the Lord will touch our hearts for us to just give special offerings. Amen, as we sh shared this morning, someone talked about, I was glad to hear someone use the term, super, uh, not superficial, but sacrificial mm -hmm. giving. Amen, uh -huh. above our tithes and offering, that yeah. we're sacrificing and giving above our tithes and offering that help in times like this, amen. So surely uh, we, we still have needs. We still have things that we're trying to do. So uh, God bless you and God keep you amen. is our prayer, amen. We know our time is getting away from us, but we want to uh, share today, if you will, amen, uh, from the book of 2 Samuel. Uh, 2 Samuel, uh, the 24th chapter and the 25th verse, 2 Samuel 24, at 25. Mm -hmm. Amen. Second Samuel, that's the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, first and second Samuel. Amen. Toward the beginning of your Bible in the Old Testament. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Mm -hmm. So the Lord heeded the prayers for the land. And the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Amen. The people, amen, prayed. The Lord heard the prayers. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Amen. Right. Amen. We will we'll share more on that thought here in a few minutes. But, you know, we spoke last time about how conceding to our creator God, admitting to him, uh, uh, is it, going to take place, you know, and that we are leaning and dependent upon him at the name of Jesus, every knees bow and every tongue shall confess. Uh, Philippians 2, 1 and 11 share with us that this very thing, that only by the name of Jesus, amen, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. He said in heaven, which is the, 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 the heavenly, uh, the celestial, the terrestrial will be the earth and those under the earth, those in the grave. God is ruler of everything mm -hmm. in every sphere, if you will. God still reigns. Amen. Amen. We will concede and say that Jesus is Lord. Whether they man will ever give his life to Christ, he will get on his knees and say, Jesus, you are Lord. Amen. Well, well. Amen. So Lord meaning again, master meaning supreme authority. It means owner. Amen. And we find again, <clears throat> as a little back up as to where we were last week, how the word Jehovah and the word Adonai, amen, is translated Lord, amen, to say Jehovah, amen, to say Adonai, amen, is saying, amen, Lord, amen. And the atoning work of Jesus Christ on Calvary is the foundation of our Christianity. It is the foundation of what happened on Calvary's hill. He hung, he bled, and he died for the sins of man and rose the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And all this is according to the scriptures. Amen. Uh, this Jehovah God, Jesus as Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus as Lord. As we look at our text on today, uh, we find that David, amen, uh, he's built an altar to the Lord and he's offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord, again, heeded the prayers for the land and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. And, and as a thought for a few minutes, I want to talk about are, are, are we in need of an altar? Come on now. Are we in need hmm. of an altar? Amen. Hmm. Uh, altars were built throughout the Bible days. Amen. And altars were, were built 
for sacrifices, amen, for sacrifices, amen. Altars were built for commemoration to say that because we're going to remember what the Lord, Lord did in this place, oh. I'm going to build an altar. And because I'm going to build an altar in this place, oh. it will remind me every time I come to give my offerings, every time I come to give my sacrifice, in other words, every time I come here to worship, I'm going to remember what God has done. So that's the question I pose to us today. Huh. Are we in need of an altar? Huh. Amen. Somewhere to, to worship. Amen. That inward to worship and, and seek the Lord. Amen. Huh. Amen. And, and for him to remove this plague. Realize, folks, uh, uh, again, COVID-19 is not around the corner, as some have said. It's not a, just around the corner, as some have believed. Amen. Even with the promises of a vaccine, uh, we're not out of the woods yet. Mm. But this plague is still upon this earth. Yeah. Amen. It's not just the United States. It's not just Russia. It's not just Africa. This is a plague. This is a pandemic across the whole globe. Mm. Amen. And God may be, uh, I'll pray he's gotten a lot of our attention as to why. He has allowed this to happen. But as our Lord and Savior, amen, man is to worship the Lord God. And again, in the Old Testament, the building of altars was done to commemorate what God had done. Amen. What he'd done in their life. Amen. They remembered what God had done. In other words, the altar was built for a place again of worship, a place of worship to render your offerings unto the Lord. <clears throat> a place to remember and to thank God for his favor. So do we need an altar in our lives? Amen. Do we need to have something to help us to remember what God has done? Amen. God seemed to have blessed us so that we have forgot about the blessings on yesterday or the day before. Amen. Uh, 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 bless the Lord on my soul and forget not all his benefits. <clears throat> Don't just remember what he did yesterday. Remember how the Lord has brought you through. Amen. How he's brought you out of Arkansas. He's brought you out of Alabama. He's brought you out of, amen, some stressful times in our lives. Amen. God has been that good. We ought to still remember those days and not forget what God has done. Mm -hmm. And every time we think about it, we ought to give God a praise. Mm -hmm. And thank God I, I'm not what I, I, I want to be, but thank mm -hmm. God I'm not what I used to be. God has brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Amen. Don't have to go out and chop cotton no more. Amen. Don't have to go out and chop wood to put in the stove to have heat in the house to cook. Amen. We can go to the wall and flip a switch. And not only that, God has blessed us so if we don't feel like cooking, there's always Chipotle's and McDonald's and Amen, Cracker Barrel and all these other places that you can just go. Amen. And partake of the blessings and the work and labor of other people. God has been good to us. We shouldn't take nothing for granted of what God has done for us. Amen. We just don't have that one Sunday suit or one dress to wear. I remember as kids, when we got home, we, we had to get out of our school clothes. Amen. And put on our play clothes. Amen. When we went to church and come home, we had to get out of our church clothes and put on our play clothes. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. Now we don't have to worry about that. Amen. You know, I'm doing some remodeling here around the house and I've messed up a few garments because I've walked in and forgetting what I had on and painted and messed up some of my garments. Amen. But I have so many shirts already. Amen. I can't complain mm -hmm. for what God has given me just because I messed up a, a shirt or a pair of pants or paint on my shoes that I should have taken off. That's how good God has been. I know somebody said, well, that's trivial, but guess what? You know, we are to thank God in all things, yes, yes, in yes. all blessings that he gives. I don't care how yes. trivial it yes, may yes. seem. We ought to thank God for the little things. Because yes. When we say the little becomes much in the master's yes. hand, God has given us so much, and we ought to be thankful for what God has done. And when we think about all the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Yes. Amen. Yes. We ought to, it just ought to cause us to just burst out in a worship or a praise <laughs> or a hymn or song. Amen. In our hearts because we're so grateful mm -hmm. to what God has done for us. And we, at least not, we shouldn't forget 
what God has done. Amen. Yeah. How he's brought it from a mighty long way. We got more blacks now that got businesses than we've ever had before. A amen. In, in, in our history, because God has blessed us so much. And I know it's been through hard work, but let's not forget God and what he's done and how he's blessed us mm -hmm. to be able to have businesses and hire people. Amen. Yes. There was a time we, we struggled in trying to get hired. Now God has blessed a few of us to be able to hire people. Amen. Mm. Amen. Don't take it for granted how Amen. good Amen. God has been. Amen. You got more one, one car, not walking everywhere. Amen. You just go to the garage and choose which mm. vehicle you're going to drive for today. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. God has been good. I'm just trying to remind you when we think about it, we ought to have an altar and we ought to be praising and worshiping God mm -hmm. and thanking him for his loving kindness and his goodness yes, that he has yes, shown yes. toward us. Yes, yes. Do we need an altar today? Moment. Has man forgotten what God has done? Has man forgotten to memorialize that this altar represents what God has done in our lives? And here we're going to worship and think about every time we come to this altar of what God has done and how he has brought us from a mighty long way. And yes, so again, the question, and we're going to keep cutting it to you, do we need to build an altar on our hearts to remember, hmm. to praise, to thank, well, to pray well, to God for all he has done? Amen, amen. amen. You know, names have been attributed to God with the building of altars throughout scripture. Amen. Again, names have been attributed to God with the building of altars throughout scripture. Abraham built an altar to commemorate how God provided a ram in the bush for sacrifice instead of his son Isaac. Have y'all forgotten that story? Amen. As Abraham took his son Isaac, he got the word from the Lord. Amen. That he was to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Amen. Amen. And this is the same God that I told him from his loins that the earth would be blessed, that he would have uh, sons and daughters and he would just multiply the earth. Now God is telling them to sacrifice his only son. Now that should ring a bell. And Amen. People should know this is a picture uh, of how God sacrificed his only begotten son. And young Isaac, you know, when he went with his father and he told the servant, y'all stay down here. Me and Isaac are going to go a little further up on the mountain to sacrifice to God. And little Isaac finally said, Lord God, I mean, he's talking to his father. Now he said, Father, I, I see, I see the wood. I see the wood, Daddy. And, and Daddy, I, I see the fire. We have the fire with us. Daddy, where's the sacrifice? Where's the sacrifice? And all I Abraham could say was, the Lord will provide. And sure enough, as he tied his son and prepared the altar of sacrifice and tied his son Isaac and laid him upon the wood and he, he covered his eyes, if you will, and he lifted up a, a, a knife to, to, to sacrifice and to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord spoke and said, stay your hand. Stay your hand. He said, now I know that you love me because you was being obedient even unto death to take your only son. Yeah. And the Bible lets us know that there was a noise that came from the bush and there was a ram that got his horns all tangled up in the bush. Isn't God a good? Mm. And he got the ram and he had a ram to sacrifice unto the Lord. Amen. And he said, I'm going to name this altar Jehovah Nisi. Amen. The Lord God will what? Provide. provide. Hey, I, I'm, excuse me. I said the wrong is Je Jehovah Jireh. The Lord the provider. Amen. Because the Lord provided him because he built an altar and was obedient. Amen. And the altar was built. And Jehovah Jireh was the name of that place. And that's where he worshiped. Because God had done a great thing, and whereof he was glad. Amen. We find Exodus 17, 15. We find Moses built an altar. Amen. Genesis 22 and 9 is what we find the account of Abraham. If you write these scriptures down, Exodus 17 and 15. Moses built an altar, and he called its name, The Lord is my banner. That's Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. Amen. See, the Lord will fight our battles. Amen. The Lord will fight our battles. 
Amen. The banner is the standard that you fight under. The flag, the United States is the banner of the United States. Every country has a flag. Every country has a banner. And you stand under your banner. And, and, and Moses said, the Lord God is my banner. Amen. The somebody said he's a battle axe. In time of the storm. Amen. Jehovah Nisi. Amen. Genesis. Amen. 26, 20 through to 25. Again, Isaac. Amen. About concerning Isaac. Amen. Isaac moved from place to place trying to dig a well. Amen. The Philistines had come in when they conquered the land and they filled all the wells. They just was honorary folk. They filled all the wells where people couldn't draw water from no more. But here Isaac came in and he was trying to dig wells so they could have water in the land. Mm -hmm. And every time he dug a well and found water, uh, some of the neighboring Amen. Folks came in and they claimed that well. Quarreling went on. So he had to find another location. And he dug another well. Amen. You read, find it in Genesis 22, 26. Amen. So, so, so he, he kept going until he finally was able to dig a well. Amen. And there was no quarrel over the well. He says, so he called the name Rehoboth. Amen. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us. Amen. And we shall be fruitful in the land. Again, and it says that he went up from there and he, he again, building the altar. Amen. Building that altar. And he called it uh, Rehoboth, meaning openness. It means space. It means room. He's saying, we're thankful to God that God has now given us room. Yes, sir. God has given us space. Mm -hmm. No quarreling. This is ours. We can take possession of this well. Have you made room in your heart for the Lord? Good morning. Amen. Have you? Are you able to say that the Lord has made room for you? The Lord has been the spaciousness that he's given to your family. Amen. What God, the many blessings, the open spaces the Lord has given you. Amen. You don't have five or six families under one roof. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got a house all by yourself. Don't have to sleep. In the same bedroom, amen. Folk on the floor, in chairs, on couches, amen. Don't have to share your bath water with your siblings. Hello, somebody, amen. We had to do it. Amen. Now we can go to a shower, we can go to a tub, we can choose which, amen, which room we want to go in to take a shower. We got a master bath, got a half bath. We got this, that, and the other. Again, do not belittle what God has done. Thanking and blessing the Lord in all things and all that he's given to us amen no more outhouses thank the lord amen not having to go out amen and meet up with some coon amen out in the outhouse amen amen to get scared to death amen i'm grateful amen for what god has done but god has given us space the 21st verse says then he went up from there to Bathsheba, still talking about isaac after digging the well and the lord appeared to him the same night and said I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. Look at the blessing he received. He said, don't fear, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he said, and I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. And he pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug a well. Amen. Amen. God is faithful when we worship him. He, mm -hmm. he remembers, amen, what has already been done. And for Abraham's sake, Isaac received the blessings. He didn't get into quarrels. He just kept going from place to place and he dug a well. And when the Lord blessed him to dig that well, he said, Lord, we're going to name it in your name, that the a name of the spaciousness, the room, you've made room for us. And we're so grateful. Also, we find in Genesis the 33rd chapter, Jacob, amen. Jacob, we find uh, an account from Jacob. He said he, he he came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padan Aram, and he pitched his tent before the city. And he bought the portion of land where he had pitched his tent from the children of Hamar, Shechem's father, for 100 pieces of money. Then he erected an altar there 
and called it Elohim. Elohim, God, the God of Israel. Amen. The God of Israel. Amen. That, that's what Jacob did. So we see a succession of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all built altars unto the Lord, all worshiped the Lord, sacrificed, burnt offerings, amen, at the altars and worshiped and thanked God for what he had done. And, and, the, and we say now what God is going to do. Because we know that's how faithful God is. Yeah. Because God is not sure concerning his promises. Amen. We still have promises that we were looking for God to fulfill. Amen. Because he is such a faithful God. Amen. 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 Thank God for his, his faithfulness to us. Amen. In Judges, we find an account of Gideon. Judges, the sixth chapter, the 21st to the 24th verse. Gideon. It says, then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, peace be with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do not fear, you shall not die. Well, yeah. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, the Lord is peace. In other words, Jehovah Shalom. Mm -hmm. God is peace. Amen. So we see Elohim, God is peace. We see God is a man, a banner. A God is a provider. Amen. Jehovah. Amen. Peace. I give you my peace, not the peace that the world gives, uh -huh. but the peace that Jesus gives. Amen. Yes. But Gideon built the altar and he named it, the Lord is peace. Have you built an altar in your life today is my question. Have you built an altar to worship God, to commemorate what God has done in your life, in your family's life? Amen. Somebody said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Yes. He kept my enemies away. He made the sun shine through the shiny day. And then he what? He rocked me in the cradles of his arm when he knew I had been tattered in the storm. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? The Lord loved us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Exodus 20, 24. Exodus 20, 24. Here's Moses, an account with Moses. Amen. An altar of earth you shall make for me. And you shall sacrifice it on, on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I record my name, I will come to you and I will bless you. Hmm. Yahweh is saying that when you built an altar, he said, I will come there. I will meet you there mm -hmm. and I will bless you there. Amen. At the altar of your heart. Amen. Amen. This is the, the design, if you will, for, amen, for the altars. When, when Moses shared with the people in Exodus that this is the fashion that God has given us, how we're supposed to design the altar, he said, amen, gave him all the dimensions, gave him how it's to be built. Mm -hmm. He said there should be no steps that lead up to the altar, for they're about to protect seeing you naked. Amen. As you rise up such steep steps, and that's what, amen, the, the, uh, um, some deities had altars built to them. And what they would do, they would raise them high up, amen, because they wanted to be grander. They wanted to make it so grand, but God was not interested in man-made altars. Hear me very carefully. He said, you make them out of earth. You have to read it for yourself. God said, I've already given you what I want you to build the altars out. Don't build it out of huge stones, meaning you go work and you cut the stones like they did to build the pyramid. Mm. He said, you just go find stones wherever they land and build my altar. What was God saying? I don't want man to take credit for the altar. Well, Amen. I, I want you to rely on me that I have provided the materials for you to build the altar. Amen. 
Amen. And not to be prideful to say, well, look what we built. Amen. Y'all remember the story of the Tower of Babel. Amen. Man got beside himself. We're going to uh, uh, build a tower all the way to see God. But God has given strict instructions. We wish we had time to go into it about all the different materials and uh, all the specifications of the altars that God wanted Moses, he wanted the children of Israel to build. Amen. And we see some facts in Exodus 40 and 10. He says, you shall anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all of its utensils and consecrate the altar. What God was saying is that the altar shall be most holy. The altar should be holy. Amen. Amen. We know the Ark of the Covenant uh, was a holy. It contained, amen, the tablets. It contained, again, the, the, the children of Israel believe to be the very presence of God was the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. And we know that as the Ark was moved, amen, a couple of the priests, they uh, carriers, they stumbled. And as those who tried to right the Ark to keep it from falling, they perished because they touched something that was holy. They should not have touched it. Amen. Amen. They should not have even touched it. But the Bible gives that account because it was holy. Amen. We find not only was it be holy, he said, we got to be careful of uh, that we don't have tainted offerings. Well, Amen. God wasn't pleased in, 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 in um, offerings that were, if you will, tainted offerings. In Matthew 5, 23 and 24, uh, Jesus Christ himself said, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come well, and offer your gift. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. A tainted offering. You know you're, you're at odds with somebody. You know that you, you need to seek forgiveness. You know that you uh, uh, have just not done what God has asked you to do against your brother and, and you are wanting to give an offering. He said, no, leave it there. Reconcile to you, but be brought back into right relationship with your brother. Then come and give your gift. Amen. So sometimes it, 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 the text is maybe suggesting to us that we can give offerings that the God doesn't receive. And we know it's unacceptable to God. We, we, we have seen that already in the Genesis account where Cain killed Abel. Cain killed his brother out of jealousy because God accepted Abel's offering. But he rejected Cain's offering. Amen. And we don't want to be in that place that whatever we bring to the Lord, we want it to be an offering that is pleasing in God's sight. In today's text, and I'm almost done in today's text. We just have a few more minutes. Amen. In 2 Samuel 24, 25, again, David. David got really prideful. David saw all that the Lord had blessed him with. And David decided to take a census of the men of Israel throughout his kingdom. And he sent his army out to count every man, amen, that was able to carry a sword, amen. And they came back almost nine months later to Jerusalem. It took them that long to census every man in the kingdom and found out that he had 800,000 men just in Israel alone. He had four or 500 men in judah folks that's 1.23 million men he had but what was the problem well david did that against what the law had taught because the law had taught in exodus 30 that when you go out to take a census god had given strict instructions on how to do hmm. and what was supposed to happen well, you know what was supposed to happen why did david get in trouble just for counting his men. Well, he was looking at how great an army he had. And he wanted to know, maybe to brag about, well, I got two million, I got five million, whatever the case might be. But the law has said that when you go out to count, when you go out to register the men in the kingdom, that you are to collect, amen, an atonement offering of a half a shekel, a half a shekel from every man. Can you imagine 1.3 million a million half shekels. I didn't get my math done to get it all equated as to what that is in today's money. But still, had that happened, the law said collect 
and bring it to God's tabernacle for the use in God's house. But because he collected nothing, he went against the law because his pride said, count them, amen, so I can boast about the numbers that I have. Count them. Don't, don't count them to be a blessing to the God's house. Amen. As he was commanded in Exodus 30, 11 through 16. Amen. He said, go tell them that when the census of the children of Israel for their number, that then every man shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord. When you number them, that there may be no plague among them when you number them. It's interesting that when they went and told David what the Lord had said, he said, you got three options. You sinned against the law, but you got three choices. Amen. He said, choose between the sword, which is war. Choose between famine, which we know is no food. Uh, he said, or, or, or choose, uh, it, it, let, let me get this together now. Amen. The enemy trying to take it from me. He said, choose war choose famine, choose plague, or choose dangerous animals. God also had, to, uh, as a judgment, that maybe animals would turn against man. And, and, and David's cry was, just don't let me fall before the hand of my enemy. I don't want war. He said, and the Lord chose the plague that came upon the land. And we fast forwarded and found out that when David didn't receive this half shekel, this atonement money, amen, collected from each man, amen, to support the tabernacle, a contribution to the Lord, it, it, that David, again, he had his men do the counting and, again, found out all that he had. But it was against the law of God. Amen. It was against the law of God. Amen. So David did what? He built an altar. Amen. He repented. He, he built an altar. He gave sacrifice to the Lord. And the Lord removed the plague. I, I, I don't know. I was drawn there to, through my studies. Uh, does the Lord again want us to build an altar so that we can present our sacrifices, present our burnt offerings, amen, uh, our praise, amen, our, our thankfulness, Amen. Our, our sharing as a Sunday school lesson, our sharing of the love of God with others. We're not to hoard the gospel, I'd like to say, but we're to spread the gospel that those that men and women might be saved. But are, are we doing that? But if we build altars and worship the Lord, he will remove the plague. Oh. Amen. That kind of reminds us, amen, uh, if my people will call by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my mm -hmm. face and turn from the wicked way, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive them of their sins, and heal the land. We are still in need of a healing today. Our numbers are going crazy. Do we need to build the altar upon our hearts on today? Amen. Amen. Israel suffered a great plague. And we find today that we're suffering a great plague. Amen. But if we seek repentance, amen, if we build these altars, amen, as David did, that once it was completed, they were received of the Lord. And I believe it's a message to us today uh, that we need to worship God more. We didn't worship him for all he's done and things he's yet to do in our lives. And this plague today, my final thoughts, if you will, sin is running rapid across the globe. Man is still disobedient to God's law. Man's law, wearing of masks, social gathering, taking uh, flights together for Thanksgiving, hatred and civil unrest. Our country is still divided. Racial unrest is still throughout our land. Wickedness in high places. Politicians in denial of COVID-19. Continue to pray for our word, our country. Amen. The South Dakota governor has been the highest in numbers, still in denial. Nature is still growing, and we've had getting louder and louder, amen, and her cry to return back to her created state. We've had record hurricane season, amen. It's not to count the murders that are still going on, the rapes, mm -hmm. the moral fabric of our society continue to get ragged and torn, and the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Oh, if my people, yeah. if my people 
We need to build altars and pray and see God's face. We're still in need of a healing. Amen. Are you working on the altar of your heart to seek, to know, to serve, and to worship God? That's what we need to be about our Father's business. Building the altars on our hearts to seek Him, to know Him, to serve Him, and to worship God. So the answer to our original question, yes, we need an altar today. We need to, uh, to worship the Lord more and more, not within the four walls. I'm not talking about getting together in in person. I'm talking about our individual worship and our seeking God while he might be found. Uh, that's what the world needs to do today so that we can worship the Lord more, more, and more. The songwriter is your all on the altar. Said we have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase. And we have earnestly and fervently prayed but we cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. It goes on and asks the question, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you yield him your body and soul. God is still looking for worshipers. God is still looking for worshipers on today. And to worship God is to know God, to love God, to serve him, to invite the Lord Jesus into your hearts. He wants you to invite him into your heart. He's your savior. He died on the cross for mankind because of sin. He took all the sins upon him. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. And by doing so, he paid a price that we could not pay. Paid a price he did not owe. But Jesus paid it all. And all to him, we owe for what God has done. That he commended, he, he demonstrated his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave. That was a response of love. Amen. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. The altars need to be built so that we can worship God. Again, you need the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. And if you just, whether you have a Bible or not, Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou art saved. Again, then we add on. Find a church that's preaching and teaching Jesus Christ in the crucifixion his crucifixion and it's coming back again and, and and to to work on your soul salvation with fear a reverence for God and trembling amen man needs to reverence God once again and remember what God has done and remember it rains on the unjust as well as the just God loves us so much but he wants us to turn back to him if that's you today, if you just pray that simple prayer, Lord, I want you to come into my life. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. You was buried and you rose again with all power in heaven and earth in your hands. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come in, Lord Jesus, to stay. Come in today into my heart. In Jesus' name, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. We love you. We thank you. Bless you. Bless his name. And thank you for spending this time with us once again on today. We pray that we will continue to pray for one another. Pray for our sick and the shut-in. Pray for our world in this condition. Pray for me because I'm praying for you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Bless the Lord on my soul and all this within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. God keep you as I pray. You can only be blessed. And have peace and sweet breath. And sweet Start working on your altar today. We all need to work on our altar. From the pulpit to the door to the ceiling to the floor. We all need to work on our altars and worship the Lord God.
Almighty. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. Amen. 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 This end our time for today. Amen. And we pray that something has been said to warm your hearts on today, to encourage you to build an altar. Amen. Again, you can find us at gntbckc.org. gntbckc.org. God bless you again and God keep you is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.